Hello and welcome back to Discovering the Bible Podcast. My name is Sarah. I'm sorry, I can't. We're just laughing because <laughs> we're getting ready to start our our um, podcast. And here's how we start it. We do this little thing where we say one, two, three, clap. And that way you sync the audio with the video and the camera. Well, Sarah always goes one, two, three. And she doesn't like clap. She <laughs> doesn't clap. She doesn't hit, you know, so she gets that nice yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll make a nice little sp spark, spike, not spark, spike, spike in the audio feed so she can see to line it all up. And so I was making fun of her and told her she's golf clapping. Yeah, I don't even clap, so it doesn't really help my microphone at all. So, so she thinks that's that's so funny. But yeah, I anyway. thought it was hilarious. Okay, I am with, as always, <laughs> wonderful Pastor Holly Howard. Hey, we're having a great time today. Um, it is one of my favorite time of year where it starts getting cooler we can start wearing jackets i'm all about it my beanie is going to stay on until june while i'm mourning the loss of summer yes so we are just in complete reversals today and i'm loving it so we are in the middle of exploring our 40 days in the word by rick warren Shout out right here. Book. Days in the Word. Check it out by yeah, Rick yeah. Warren. Love, love, love this devotional. It is fabulous. Yeah, so we started off with the pronounce it method, and now we are in the middle of the picture it method. For all you visual people out there like me, we love this. Mm -hmm. All of your more dramatic people love this because we're like, I get to put myself in the middle of the biblical scriptures now, and you kind of get to get a visual of what's happening and you really apply it to what you would actually act like if you were in that story. So for those of you who are kind of on that vein of studying, you're going to love this method. And we're going to kind of talk about it more today yeah. and how we can apply that when we're reading scripture. So last week was awesome. If you didn't listen to the episode before this, go check that out. You want to check that out first before yes. you listen to this one because we're going to kind of bounce back to that one. Exactly. Back and forth. So um, last week was amazing. <laughs> it was really eye-opening because it was really, um, I mean, it's really relative for how a lot of people were feeling with, you know, kind of feeling like Jesus was asleep on the boat. So now we're going to dig into a new scripture with Jesus, yep. which I think is just hilarious because it's like, okay, next. And so you're going to, you're going to figure this out as she talks about it. So what are we talking about today? Holly? All right. So we're going to use the picture it method again um, with the passage where Jesus walks on water and this we're using Mark 6, 45 through 51. And so I'm going to read the passage. And as I read the passage, I want you to picture yourself as how would I feel if I was the disciple in the boat? And uh, I want you to picture how you would feel if you were Peter. And so I'll have to read a second passage of scripture because um, in Mark 6, 45 uh, through 51, Mark records the, the account of uh, Jesus walking on the water, but uh, he doesn't mention Peter in his account. So we have to go back to Matthew's account where Matthew does. So yeah. I'm gonna read Mark 6, 45 through 51. Picture yourself as I read this, as you are the disciple in the boat. I want you to imagine how you would feel, what, you know, what would you do in this situation? So verse, I'm gonna start reading verse 45. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side to Bethsaida while he himself was spending was sending the crowd away after bidding them farewell he left for the mountain to pray when it was evening the boat was in the middle of the sea and he was alone on the land seeing them straining at the oars so Jesus sees them from where he's praying seeing them straining at the oars for the wind was against them at about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea, and he intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed that it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he, that being Jesus, spoke to them, that being the disciples, and said to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind stopped, and they were utterly astonished. So now I'm going to read the account from Matthew in Matthew 14, 28 through 31. I want you to picture yourself now specifically as Peter. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. When he saw that the wind was boisterous, 
He was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me! And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, that's Peter, and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Okay, so if I'm picturing myself as the disciple in this story, I've, I have struggled at the oars because it says they were struggling, and it was the fourth watch of the night. So, so this is the second storm. Mm -hmm. We talked about uh, the first storm, and, and now they're back in the middle of a boat, and they're, they're in a boat in the middle of, of the sea again, and Jesus has told them again to go to the other side, and this time it's a strong wind that's contrary. In other words, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to row against a very strong wind. And they've been straining at the oars, the Bible says in Mark, in this passage. And it's the fourth watch of the night. So I'm paying right. attention to the details in the story, which tells me that they're struggling. They've been struggling for a long time yeah. and they're getting tired and they're wearing out. So I'm, I, I'm tired. My arms are burning. Mm -hmm. I, I know Jesus said to go to the other side, and I just keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on. And it's, you know, and I've been going through this, and it, you know, this has been going on for hours and hours. I've been struggling, and, you know, a, a journey that crossed the Sea of Galilee doesn't, shouldn't take that long. It's not an all-night journey. I've been there. I've crossed the Sea of Galilee, and I'm um, on a motorized boat. It takes us about 30 minutes to cross over to the other side. So this is something that it's, they've been rowing, and um, they've been straining at the oars for hours. The fourth watch wow. of the night means it's almost at the breaking of dawn. Okay. So they've been doing, they've been at this all night. So there's, so if I'm, I'm the disciple in the boat, I've just witnessed Jesus do this awesome miracle on the side of the hill where he takes some five loaves and two fish and he feeds a crowd of 5,000 people. So all the disciples have just witnessed this miracle. And I'm, if I'm in that, that boat and I'm a disciple and I'm picturing what it was like, I've witnessed this miracle. I just got out of a red hot revival where there was some awesome miracles happens and I leave the revival and can't even get home and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> And that's probably what they felt like. And yep. so, so they're straining at the oars. They've been struggling and struggling, and it burns and it hurts. And if I'm picturing the disciples, I'm probably thinking, okay, what am I supposed to do? I witnessed the miracle. This is my second storm. Jesus told me to rebuke the winds and the waves, but, yep. but I don't do it. Yeah. And I'm not doing it because for some reason I don't have the faith. Um, so that's kind of me picturing the disciples. What about you? I'm, you know, I'm thinking I'm tired, I'm worn out, um, and I'm thinking seeing Jesus as a ghost is because I, like, you know, you're seeing him walk on the waves, and you're probably thinking, like, oh, man, I am tired. Like, there's a ghost out there. I'm just all kind of freaked out. Um, oh, I didn't think about the ghost. Isn't that something? Like, you're yeah. afraid, so fear. Okay. Yeah, so you're afraid. I so forgot. Yeah, so all this physical wear and tear on you, when you're in the middle of something like that, like a big storm, you kind of forget all of the things that you should do, mm. almost. Yeah. And so you don't get your eyes fixed on the situation. So as the disciples, even though we're told not to be afraid and that we can rebuke the winds and waves, you're not thinking of that as your arms are hurting, you're tired, you just want to get to the other side, you've been out in the hot sun all day, you know, you're just trying to get to the other side and all this, like, weather is just affecting you, and then you see a ghost and you're like, oh, man, I'm out, <laughs> you know, I'm like, this is, I'm done, yeah. and so um, as a disciple, you're, you're just exhausted, you're tired, you're fatigued, and now you're seeing Jesus walk and you're just like, what's happening? What's happening? Yeah, so that's so. some really, really incredible re revelation just right there because my mind start, my brain and, you know, my little wheels start spinning. Exact Jesus had already taught them what to do. This right. is the second, this is what hit me so much out of this passage. It's the second time. Mm -hmm. They'd already been through a storm once and Jesus did a miracle. He was asleep in the stern of the boat and he got up and he rebuked the winds and the waves and he spoke peace. He basically told the, told the winds, shut up, and it did. Yeah. And immediately the storms and the waves stopped. And so they knew Jesus had already showed them what to do, but they struggled anyway. But you keep hitting on, and I'm thinking if they're straining at the oars, I'm tired. Yeah. 
So one of the things I really feel like in the in our faith walk, in our Christian walk, that the devil does, the enemy does to 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 defeat us is he gets us physically and emotionally tired. I've been in the middle of this problem. I have struggled in this problem. I have been believing God for healing, but I'm so sick and tired of the constant pain. Yep. And I'm exhausted. And so when you get tired and you get exhausted, you know what Jesus taught you, but for some reason you struggle to do and act out and, and, and walk out in that faith. And that's so that's so true to how that's how it's like that's how the enemy gets us. That's how every he time. gets us every time. So I don't know. That was I don't know what you what do you what you think about look at that? that. <laughs> look at that. Okay, she thinks <laughs> look at that. All right, well, okay. Um let's picture us as Peter then. Let's picture us as Peter. So this happens, they see Jesus out on the boat, and then uh, Peter's like, ah, you know, he says, don't be afraid, it's me. And then that's when Peter says, hey, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come to you. Jesus says, well, come on, bro. And uh, so, <laughs> so Peter's like, okay, I'm going to get out and walk on water. Now, remember, the waves are real, the wind yeah. is really, really strong. It's like, you know, super strong winds blowing. And, uh, and uh, you know, that's causing the, the waves to kind of grow. So I'm thinking, if I'm Peter, wow, I would be scared and excited at the same time to yeah. get out and step on that water. Whoa, I mean, this really happened. This is not, this is not a parable, people. He really right. physically stepped out of a boat, and when his foot hit the ground, that water was solid, and he walked on it. And Jesus was standing on the water. So I would be like, wow, I would be so amazed. And I don't think I would have the faith of Peter to step out and step out of the and, and walk on water like that. I can more relate to Peter to see the storms and be like take, taking my eyes off of Jesus and then feel like, oh man, I'm going down and 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 lose sight of Jesus and sink. That's where I yeah. can relate. I can't relate to the incredible, awesome faith to step out and stand on the water. Yeah, because I'm I'm one of those people who's barely believing in the boat holding me. Um, so to think that I can step out on water to hold me, I'd definitely be more on the side of here being like, hey, Jesus, is that even you? Like, if that's you, let me know. You know, you know what I'm saying? And um, so I definitely don't think I'd have the faith of Peter to actually step out of the boat. So I don't think I can even get to that place yeah. of being in that faith right now. So that's where we have to really pray, and this is where we apply it and give this to the Lord. Why do yeah. we struggle through life storms when we've experienced Jesus save us from past ones? Mm. We, we have experienced, the disciples saw Jesus sleep through a storm with perfect peace, get up and speak to the winds and the waves. They witnessed the miracle and just left a red hot revival service, and we do the same thing. We see miracles. We see Jesus do miracles in our life. We're astonished. Oh, I can't believe yeah. that answer to prayer. I can't believe it came through. When it happens, we have the same reaction as Peter, but then we turn right around and we and we 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 make it through one problem in our life and, and we see God do and Jesus do this great miracle in, in it and then we encounter immediately we go into another storm and then we struggle through that one too. And we forget what he's done in the yeah. past. We forget that if he brought me through last year, if he brought me through yesterday, mm -hmm. if he, you know, if he got me through and he healed me, he'll do it again. Right. And and here's the thing that just that I just pondered over over and over and over again with this is that that just smacked me in the face. This was the second time around. Satan doesn't stop. No. You may get through one storm and get a miracle in one area of your life. It, it, don't think that it, more storms won't come. They're always going to come. If you are walking by faith and you're following Jesus and he says, go do this, you are going to meet resistance oh, yeah. constantly. Our church is going to meet resistance. Your church is going to meet resistance. Mm -hmm. And this was the second time. Jesus was sleeping perfectly the first time. So was it intentional? I start thinking about this. And then the thing that hit me was he intended to pass them by. He he saw them straining at the oars. Wow. He leaves his place of prayer. He's walking on the water in front of them. And his intention is to keep on walking. And he was going to go to the other side and leave them jokers struggling in the boat. <laughs> and I sit here and think, why? 
And here's what I really felt like after really meditating and flipping this over in my mind for like a week. I really, this is what I really felt like God was speaking and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me through this is that he'd already taught them. He's already mm -hmm. taught me. He's already shown me the kingdom. He's already given me the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth, you shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He's already told me who I am in Christ. He's already told me Romans 8 and 11 that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives and dwells inside of you and will quicken your mortal body. He's already told me not to be conformed to this world in Romans 12 too, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He's already shown me in how he's performed miracles. He's healed right. me. He's answered prayers. I have seen in my lifetime tremendous tremendous, exam, uh, tremendous uh, answers uh, to prayer and miracles. I've witnessed miracles. I have seen, I have seen uh, demons cast out of people. I've witnessed miracles in front of my eyes. I've seen, I know, and he's done this. I have faith. I know it. his word is sure and his word is true. So right. here I am thinking, okay, Jesus wasn't being mean. He wasn't being unfeeling and uncaring to stay asleep in the boat in the first time. And he wasn't being mean and uncaring and insensitive to pass them by the second time. I believe he was saying, I can't do it for you. You have to do it. I've given you the keys. I've already told you who you are. I've already told you you have this authority living inside of you. My spirit lives in you. I've already told you you're going to do greater things than me if you'll only believe. I have to step back and let you figure this out and let you walk out your faith on your own because if you don't you'll never learn to walk on the water i'm trying to show you how to do it so that you'll walk in faith and you'll no longer be moved by your circumstances anymore so i feel like his intention to pass them by and his intention to seem like he's asleep or he's walking us by in our struggles when we're failing when we feel like we're dying when we feel like we're why am i not being him we're going through a crisis of faith he's not unfeeling he's not caring he's sitting back and he's saying I'm, I'm cheering you on you can do this just wow. step out of the boat and act on it and put some faith to your actions put some actions to your faith act out my word yeah. and get some peace and trust me that if I told you my word it's going to be performed wow. and that's so why I think that's why he gets offended that says oh Peter you have little f doubt. Why didn't you believe? It's like it offends the heart of God that he says, I've, I've proven yeah. over and over to you that my word will not fail. Why won't you believe it? And if you believe it, you'll act on it. You don't believe in something that you don't do. Right. So I think he's sitting back waiting for us to act, not to give a lip service that we believe yeah. in something. So that's where I was completely just like, wow, what is it you want me to do? Mm -hmm. What is it you want me to do? Yeah. You know, do you trust him? Or are you relying in your own strength to get, you know, through your circumstance? Um, it's kind of like, you know, a father teaching his child to ride a bike. And the child keeps looking at him like, you got me, Dad? You got me? And the dad's like, I got you. I told you I got you. And then when the dad shows the child like, hey, you got this. I've, I've trained you. I've shown you how to do it. I, you got to believe in it. And then when you finally believe in it and you believe in the way of riding the bike and you're on your own, the dad's like, I told you, I had you. I'm right behind you. I got you. I showed you what you, you can do that. And so I feel it's just like, you know, Jesus is like, I've shown you. I've walked with you. I've taught you. I was there with you when you're learning. But now you got to do it. Yeah. You got to trust in me for the next time you get on your bike. Yep. You can write it. And so, um, you know, where are you struggling in your faith this week? Yeah. Really take time after listening to this podcast to pray, God, help me believe in your word and believe that you have equipped me to do this. What is God speaking to you yeah. through this message right now? What is it? What are you struggling with? What crisis of faith are you in? What storm are you in the middle of? Right. And what is it that the Lord is speaking to you that you need to do mm -hmm. to put some works to your faith? Because James says, faith without works is dead. Yeah. What is the Holy Spirit speaking to you in your heart right now? And let me encourage you, don't give up no. hope. We are called Bridge of Hope because we want to be a bridge 
that helps people find hope again, yep. helps bring people back to Jesus Christ, helps, bring, help, help, helps people to find hope in desperate situations. I know a lot of people personally going through some absolutely outrageous things, mm -hmm. outrageous, excessively difficult, I mean, I'm talking hurricane force yeah. storms. I know a lot of people. What what is it that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that you need to do to trust His Word? And you can trust His Word because you know His character and yep. the person who said it will perform it. That's right. So I want to close this podcast with a prayer. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, speak. Speak to my friends listening. Speak to you, your precious, precious, beloved people. They're listening right now and their heart is heavy and they're burdened because boy have they been through some storms. They got through one thing and they just got hit with another and maybe they got through that and they got hit with another and they're tired. They've been straining at the oars. They're exhausted and they don't know if they can take another minute. I've been there. I have been there. I have felt that and you have compassion when we feel that you have compassion, when we're struggling through life, we're struggling with faith, we have a crisis of faith and we forget your miracles. We forget how you answered that prayer, that thing that you did for us, how you came through for us. We forget it. So God, I'm asking you to give hope again. And God, that you would give us faith to step out of our boat and start walking on the water towards you, to keep our eyes on you and stop looking at the circumstances and don't let them overtake us anymore. And to take the burden, to stop struggling at the oars and to give it to you and let you carry it and to trust you. So Holy Spirit, give hope to those who have given up on hope. Give peace to those who are overwhelmed right now with anxiety and help us, God, to put works to our faith and to trust you and believe that your word will not fail. I pray that you would help us to overcome every fiery dart of the enemy coming against our mind, causing us to doubt. You said in your word in Isaiah 26, you said, he who keeps his mind stayed on the Lord, that mind will live in perfect peace. That's how you sleep through a hurricane, help us to have peace in the middle of a storm, to keep our mind, our eyes completely fixed on your word and your promise and never be moved by the circumstances we see around us, no matter how much the wind screams, no matter how much Satan screams at us, no matter how much fear grips our heart, no matter how many times he tries to lie and get us to doubt that you don't care, we will not believe it. We will not listen to the enemy another minute. I declare that faith will begin to rise in our hearts in Jesus' name. I declare that we're going to step out by faith and we're going to know who we are in Christ, realize that we are sons, we're kings, and we have the authority to take authority and command the storm to be still, to shut up in our life and to command the winds to stop. So let us rise up and do what you've taught us to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for listening this week. Share with all your friends on your Facebook. Um, you know, listen to our SoundCloud. All those links will be below. And stay tuned for next week. I know it's going to be good. And we will see you real soon. God bless. Bye-bye.